Hello everyone, welcome to the GOI Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the GOI Ecologist. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel but also do check the various playlists that is already available on the channel. Now, in today's session on regional geography, what we are going to learn is the concept of region, how it came into being, its evolution and also various classifications of the concept of region so before we go ahead don't forget to subscribe to our channel do share the videos and let's learn now so now let's understand the concept evolution and classification of the region in this particular lecture. So what is a region? A region is an area or location on Earth's surface which is marked by certain properties. And what kind of properties? How do we know them? From its homogeneity that is homogeneous inside and distinct from outside it. Now what does it mean? It means that how one is distinct from the other. That's what it means. So let's look into this particular diagram and understand that how do we define a region? So a region is an area which is distinct from outside. So if you observe this diagram, outside is here and inside is here. Now this particular green belt if you observe has a peculiar characteristic that it is green in nature. But as you go outside of it, it is clearly distinct from outside. So this kind of homogeneity where exists is considered as region in simple language, right? So region means to understand as a tract of land or any area or a portion of earth surface which has two aspects. What is the two aspects? Let's understand. So spatial dimension that is objective reality. Now when I say spatial dimension, what does it mean? It should have a location that is defined. It should have an aerial extent that is defined and also it should have a boundary that is important. So you can see the LAB concept, location, area and boundary concept. That is what is the speciality and now non-spatial dimension for example the attribute of it the data of it it means what kind of construct are we taking what kind of criteria are we talking about which is homogeneous in this particular area is it a natural attribute a human attribute or a combined attribute that is what we understand that there are two dimensions of a region one is the spatial and one is the non-spatial which makes together the definition of a region now let's understand further that there have been many geographers many scholars right from ancient who have been talking about these concepts in different ways, in different forms, in different time period. And also we have learned about it in evolution of geographical thought. So if you have not watched the videos on geographical thought, there is a playlist on our channel on evolution of geographical thought. You can watch it and you can learn from there as well. So now let's understand some of the important definitions given by geographers at different points of time. So a region is a unit area of Earth's surface differentiated by its specific characteristics. This was Monk house definition. Then comes the next definition is Herbertson's definition. A region is a complex of land, water, air, plant, animal, man regarded under spatial relationship. So he gives a broader definition further. Then there is another scholar which is Vidal de la Blache. Remember French school of geographical thought and he talked about a region being a domain where many dissimilar things are artificially brought together. Now this word artificially brought together talks about Anthropocene, Anthropocentric approach, humanistic approach or you can say human centric approach where we create a region, it's not actually there. Right? And then further what we observe is a region is an area of specific location which in some way is very distinctive from the other areas and this is given by Richard Hartshorn. If you remember his work Nature of Geography 1939 where he defined the aerial differentiation. So aerial differentiation became the building block for regional geography in our modern geography. Right? So now let's understand the evolution and development of regional geography a little bit learning through history and what happened, how this concept evolved. So first of all we go back to the Greeks and Romans where Aristotle and others talked about this first paradigm where theoretical framework of understanding spaces was given. And remember the first kind of concepts of variations in habitability, the habitable zone, the concept of Eukmean was given. That is habitable zones on earth. 
So that is where the first kind of zonation or regionalization came on the basis of latitudinal position. Then what you observe here is Eratosthenes who is also regarded as father of geography because he coined the word geography. So he was the librarian at Alexandria and he talked about the climatic zones like torrid zone, temperate zone, frigid zones. This is also kind of regionalization, but not in the word of regionalization. As a concept, it was there. Then further, what you observe is the concept given by Strabo. And remember, Strabo was a great Roman scholar in his monumental volume, 17 volume of works in Geographica. He talked about various aspects of Europe, Asia and Africa. So this was dividing the known world, the then known world into several regions and talking about it. But he did not mention the word region there, right? So what you observe further, that these kind of mapping was there where regional divisions of the known world was given by Strabo and then further what we observe is the work of al maqdisi in the Arab scholars where he talks about the best divisions for the classification of regions in Arabic in about 10th century and here he divides the modern day Syria into four geomorphological zones running parallel to Mediterranean Sea. That's where regional concept further got evolved. Now we talk about after age of discovery and and when in Europe the knowledge wealth concentrated. So who was the great scholar? Bernard Varenius. He published a book in 1649 where he talks about regional description of Japan in his volume. Also remember he talked about Geographia Generalis where he divided the subject itself into two parts. So what we say is geography as a general geography, geographies as a specific geography and this is where regionalization concept was further concretized. Then what we observe is the concept coming from Karl Ritter in his great work that is the Urkund where regional description of the earth was supposed to be the prime purpose of geographical studies. Right? Then what we observe is Ferdinand von Richofen Another great scholar from Germany who actually gave the concept of chorology and differentiated it from chorography and chronology. And now remember the word choros is basically meaning place. So this was for the parallel study to history because history was chronology and geography was chorology. So that's where this concept started to evolve and who took this concept? To further evolve it was Alfred Hetner, another German scholar and he is well known for actually defining and conceptualizing the work of chorology after Richofen and also his work influenced the later scholars like Carlos Saar, Richard Hartshorn and his two volumes of work published in 1907 and 1924 on Europe was basically the first major foundation of regional geography in modern human geography. So Alfred Hetner is supposed to be the foundation stone of regional geography as a subject matter in geography. What you observe further other scholars like Recluse who wrote about world regional geography, physical geography of the world, La Terra. There further what you observe is the great scholar Vidal de la Blache, the great French scholar who gave the concepts of regional geography of the world in terms of geography of France and geography of Europe. He gave the word and concept of pays. What is basically meaning of pays? The regional units, the regional homogeneous units, which is human created, human milieu, human created environment. That's where human geography comes into the picture. Then what you get into the picture is the urban geography where Patrick Geddes, concept of region to architecture he brought. And what did he give? Remember we talked about in settlement geography, the concept of conurbations. So that's the impact of region in terms of settlement geography. Then what you observe further, another great scholar, J. Herbertson, who became a professor at Oxford University. He was influenced by whose work? Patrick Geddes' work. And further, he studied the regionalization concept and further divided the world into 15 natural regions on the basis of homogeneity in surface features, climate and vegetation. So this is another work of regional geography that you see in the evolution. Then further, Roxby was another scholar who proposed the first concept of human region. Now remember, human region is different from a natural region in terms of the creations that is where human created spaces can differentiate one from the other right and then the next scholar is Carlos Saar who in his work on 
cultural landscape. Remember, he was influenced by another German scholar, Otto Schluter, and then he worked on cultural landscape and the work Morphology of Landscape is one of the greatest work of human anthropocentric approach, anthropogenic landscape or you can say cultural landscape or anthropogenic regional geography. So very interesting concepts by Carlos R. And then further we see Derwent Whittlesey's concept of sequent occupants where he divides the world into 13 agricultural regions. So remember we have talked that also and problems of our time, environmentalism versus geography, these kind of volumes came in 1940s and in his concept of compage region he talks about the combination of natural and human factors together so remember the combination of many parts to become a whole so kind of application of the systemic science in regional geography was a very interesting concept of Derwent Whittlesey further if you observe who is known as father of modern regional geography is the great American scholar that is Richard Hartshorn who talked about the accurate orderly and rational description of the earth that is the purpose of geography in which volume in his work nature of geography in 1939 and also perspective on nature of geography in 1959 right so his definition if you observe what is it the product of man's effort to know and understand the combinations of phenomena as they exist in aerial interrelations in the world is the prime purpose of geography right so the concept of aerial differentiation actually stamped and concretized this entire evolutionary concept of of regional geography but remember another important thing that he borrowed the idea from the earlier scholar that was Hetner and others and where he asserts that geography is about study of aerial differentiation and in the center of regional geography is the study of unique places it means the whole purpose of geographical study is to study uniquenesses of the places but remember he was also criticized by the other scholars like Schaeffer in 1950s who talked about exceptionalism in geography a methodological examination in 1953 and where he said that no only regional concept in geography cannot be accepted as a scientific approach so then other scholars came with scientific approaches Ullman's spatial patterns Bunge's theoretical geography Peter Haggett's locational analysis in human geography further gave impetus to many theories based on positivistic approach quantitative revolution in geography and where regional geography was treated with some scientific approach as well so it continued to develop and later on in regional synthesis remember brian berry talked about systematic geography and regional geography combined together to get the overall picture so that's how the evolution of regional concept in geography came across. Now what you observe that what is the element or characteristics of a region? Let's understand. So the first characteristic of a region is its specific location. Then we have distinctiveness that one area is unique. It is distinct from the other. Remember and that's why the principle of homogeneity and heterogeneity comes into the picture. Homogeneous is similarity within the region and heterogeneity is those elements towards its regional boundaries if you go. It it will start to become different. So as you are in the core of a region, center of a region, what happens? The same elements, the same attributes are everywhere common. But as you go away from the core of the region, the same element starts to get different in terms of diversity, in terms of heterogeneity. Then dynamic or changing characteristic. So that basically means the features are changing with times and also the hierarchy of region. Remember hierarchical arrangement, we studied that in settlement geography, hierarchy of settlements. So that's when we observe that the concept can be at different scales because of this hierarchy. Right? So what do you observe further? That dynamic scale, problematic concepts, purposive concepts and resourcefulness. These 10 characteristics are basic characteristics of a region how we define then further if you observe the structure of a region how do we define a structure so let's understand the structure in terms of three words remember node zone and area so a region will have a node where intersections of various attributes like various roads, various railway lines, rivers would meet. It will create a node. It's basically an intersection of different elements. So in a simplified structure of city region, you observe these nodes are like this. And these nodes are the polarized or centralized concept. Remember growth pole theory. So from node, it becomes a pole. And then further what we observe, it creates a functional region. It means as you go away from this particular node, the functions will extend of a city. 
so next then we create zones alongside these nodes so these are the zones which is core city middle part and peripheral part so look at this zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 so this is how zonation happen and then we remember the area it includes zone plus node plus the final transition boundaries so then coming together it forms a particular region so region has three components starts from nodality centrality central function to becoming an area and also having a boundary so that's what we look into node zone and area concept in terms of structure of a region now let's identify the classes of a region it means what are the various types how can we identify so special regions like one being unique then generic regions that is number of similarities in a particular place on the basis of its origin then synthetic regions the word itself is synthesized created then homogeneous region it talks about homogeneity of a attribute or a phenomenon now. and then we have nodal regions that is centrality central place theory comes into the picture major functions and also programming or planned regions this is for administrative purposes right like watershed planning so that kind of approach is given to the region so what you observe this is the classification of region diagram which you can learn and make for yourself so based on principle you have principle of homogeneity principle of interlinkages you have natural region cultural region economic region and also commodity flow human flow information flow capital flow so that makes up a region then based on the size you can have macro meso micro local this is like a scaling right and then you observe the basis of genesis that is on the basis of origin so you have a nave region instituted region denoted region that is planning region so what you observe nave region is a mental construct an assumption that you have on the basis of certain cultural component then instituted region is basically institution based or you can say development of an institution makes it a particular region an educational hub a religious hub a cultural hub and then you have a denoted region when you denote it in a particular way on a given map that's how we create these regions right so this is on the basis of origin genesis right so you can observe some of the examples like world climatic region what kind of region is it on the basis of climatic homogeneity so where one kind of climate exists is put under one category so equatorial to what you observe humid continental right then the next kind of approach is economy approach so in economic approach what you see world economic region on the basis of world GDP so one class is for one kind of GDP isn't it so as you have different criteria as you can make a region so region is actually a concept which can be created recreated and also has been evolving since the ancient till today and is relevant in the subject of regional geography human geography or the major component of the subject called geography so now when we have discussed in details about the various concept and attributes of region its various evolution concepts and also the types in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on other aspects of planning and its various subjects so stay tuned stay safe keep learning and watching best wishes for your exams and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well